Okay, so battery charger. So most of the time, uh, I mean, ninety percent of people will say, okay, where is my charger? Where is my phone charger? Okay, and you refer to that uh, wall adapter charger. That is not charger actually. That is uh, simply a AC to DC converter, which takes your two twenty volt. Uh, main supply and converts to 5 volt USB standard. Okay, but that is not charging your phone. It's supplying 5 volt to the uh, phone uh, from where your battery is getting charged actually. So the charger is sitting inside your phone. That is not the charger. That is only supplying voltage. So you can and uh, most of the these wall adapter will have. Uh, if you look at, uh, uh, there'll be a, a specification printed which will say what is input and output. Input will say 220 volt AC and output will say 5 volt 1 amp or 5 volt 500 milliamp something. Okay. So, 5 volt will always be there because it is a USB standard and this current may vary. So, if you buy more expensive wall adapter, this current may be higher uh, because you do not know what kind of maximum current your phone can support, it all depends on batteries. So, if your let us say phone can support 2 amp, but the wall adapter you have plugged in the maximum current it can supply to 500 milliamp then your charging will be very slow in that case so if you really want to utilize the full capacity of the battery then your uh, wall adapter should be compatible with your uh, charger specification so your usb is has a four ports huh? one is your uh, supply one is ground and other is d plus d minus i'll come to that actually i have shown so uh, those are data lines and data line is completely different from this and you can have a dedicated USB cable for charging only then D plus D minus will not work at all. So, if you connect that cable for communication purpose it will fail to communicate. So, this takes input from your wall adapter 5 volt and then at the output of this charger your battery is connected and it basically controls the current based on in which phase your battery is okay and when it's fully charged this will cut off this current and will stop uh, drawing any current from your wall adapter okay so sometimes uh, some people say okay don't keep your charger plugged in for a long time it will reduce the life of your battery because you cannot but that's not true huh this charger takes care of everything when battery is fully charged it will automatically cut off. When I say your battery has a charge discharge cycle of uh, let us say 1000 charge discharge cycles, it is measured with full charge and full discharge. Okay. But if you allow only 10 percent uh, discharge, after 90 percent you again plug in, then you can get 10,000 cycle of charge discharge. Okay. And also when your battery is fully discharged, the stress on the battery will be more. Okay. And but when you do not allow your battery to discharge below certain level, then uh, stress on the battery will be low. So, you can imagine the, if you are charging your battery with a full current for a longer time, then chances of hitting are more, huh? correct. So, the chemistry of battery, chances of uh, chemist changing the chemistry of battery is more at a higher current compared to lower current. So, when you never allow your battery to discharge 0, uh, I mean uh, 0 percent or so, then you will never uh, leave your battery in a full current uh, phase or full uh, basically 1C phase or 2C, 3C phase whatever if it is uh, for a longer time, then you can increase the life of your battery. So, so that is why when we say that uh, never allow your battery to fully discharge, that is the main reason actually, it is not uh, any other reason. So, fully discharge and charge because you want to measure the capacity of the battery. So, unless you complete the full cycle, you won't know what is the capacity of battery. So, in order to measure, if I want to measure the capacity of the battery, I have to start with 0. Huh? If I am starting with 50 percent, I will not know what capacity of the battery has. So, you start with 0, okay, let it fully discharge and charge again. So, let us say you empty uh, in, a, in, in your car, if you want to know whether my capacity of my ta car tank is 40 litre or 50 litre, you have to start from empty. Huh? So, empty tank, you get it filled, your meter will tell how much uh, in, in uh, let us say with after 40 litre, yeah, it, it has, I mean uh, it cuts off, 
then you will know that capacity is 40 liter that is what uh, in order to measure the capacity of the battery you have to fully charge uh, discharge and charge again. So, that is the main reason actually. Okay. So, uh, wall adapter only provides DC voltage usually 5 volt in case of USB standard or it may be higher in case of fast charging the fast charging it requires higher voltage and I will tell uh, why we require a higher voltage thing. Uh, and that will be at a specified current. So, source uh, to battery charger could also be from USB data port. So, when you plug in and uh, you might have seen, so you can plug in your phone to the wall adapter uh, that has a, a USB cable or let us say your computer has a USB port, you plug in that your phone will start charging, but there is a big difference between the two. That guy will be charging at uh, 1 amp or 2 amp, this will be charging only at 500 milliamp. Uh, you can uh, 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 you can do this experiment, uh, just plug in your phone uh, to a, your laptop and you can see your charging rate will be uh, slower compared to what you get with the wall adapter. The reason is USB standard does not allow output current more than 500 milliamp that is it. So, it will charge only with 500 milliamp. There are lot of apps where which can tell you, you how much with what current your battery is being charged actually. So, you can download that app and see. Yeah the phone itself uh, you can see how much current uh, uh, is battery being charged or even if you are not charging uh, you are running some apps and it will tell you how much current is drawn by your cell phone. So, both you can get from that app. Okay, so, USB data versus charging port. So, so, a standard uh, downstream port which is called uh, SDP. So, uh, this port features 15 kilo ohm uh, pull down resistors on both D plus and D minus, these are the data. So, with the, these resistors, uh, it will detect whether it is a dedicated charge port or it is a data port. Okay. So, the cable basically, the cable you are plugging, plugging in, whether it is a data cable or it is a charging cable. Even though like uh, uh, same cable can be used for data as well as uh, uh, charger, but if you require a very high current for charging, your data does not require that much current. Huh? So, the, the quality of the cable which is used for data uh, can be much lower compared to what? So, and the cost will also vary your data cable let us say you can buy for 10, 10, 20 rupees, but you are looking for a high quality charging cable it may be 200, 300 or 500 rupees, okay. especially if you look for a Apple phone cables, it will be very expensive. Okay. So, um, so then uh, this is a, from a USB standard itself, uh, uh, so maximum value of this 15 kilo ohm is 24.8 in the worst case. So, based on these uh, resistors uh, which is connected between D plus and D minus, your uh, phone will detect whether it is a dedicated charging port or it is a standard uh, cable okay. and this is very easy to detect the value of. You can just uh, source a current and look at the IR drop or you can put a uh, constant uh, resistor with the VDD and it will well act as a voltage divider. So, that is also um, you can do. If you have a dedicated charging port, then D plus and D minus are shorted actually. So, you cannot use this for uh, communication purpose. So, in that case, uh, it will be only used for charging that cable. So, that cable will not work if you want to transfer any data over USB or anything. So, but uh, it will support much higher current, that is advantage. Okay. So, then um, yeah, so, so that that is how you do and in this case actually, you do not even need to run the two separate wires, huh? you can only have two wires uh, which is your ground and supply because uh, it is a dedicated charging port. So, D plus D minus are shorted. So, these resistors will be mostly connected on the other end of your connector, but your cable is running all the way from your adapter to the uh, other end correct. So, you can save two wires here and you can make your uh, V bat and uh, so let us say in the same thickness. I got rid of two wires which are data cable and I have increased the thickness of the uh, supply and ground wire. So, it can support much higher current 
so that's why this dedicated charging port uh, do not support this d plus and d minus or data transfer so it is capable of supplying your currents uh, beyond 1.5 amp and it features a uh, short between d plus and d lines by connecting a uh, couple of 100 ohm resistor between these two so this type of port allows for wall chargers and car chargers with high charge capability without the need for enumeration enumeration means like when you connect the uh, your uh, usb cable uh, or your usb device so it goes through enumeration where it detects what kind of device it is okay it's just a detection of your usb that's it just like when you plug in your usb so it will detect what has been plugged uh, whether it's a real usb or device or not and based on that it will that it will take next decision charging downstream port uh, cdp this port allows for both high current charging and data transfer fully compliant with usb so so this guy actually can do both things so it's a combination of you can say high current charging as well as data and this is a much higher quality cable you can say it features the 15k pull down resistor necessary for d plus and d minus communication okay just like this so you have to support this uh, resistor pull down resistor in order to communicate over the cable and also has internal circuitry that is switched in during the charging detection phase so what it will do when the charger is connected okay so it will go in the charging phase when uh, when you, you are transferring the data then uh, it will basically allow these pull down resistors to be connected okay so it automatically detects between whether you are uh, device you have connected it's a wall adapter charger or it's a, a usb data transfer device like your flash or anything so usb plug in detection when you connect your uh, device or your charger so as I mentioned, there is a 15k resistor here with the ground. So, when you connect, you can have a pull up resistor and then you will get a voltage in between. So, between VCC and ground level depending upon, so this will be 15k over uh, 1.15k plus 1.5k. So, it is uh, pretty close to your VCC, slightly below that. Okay. So, um, and uh, this this is low speed device and if you have a full speed device so the only difference is in this case resistor is connected to the negative port and this the resistor is connected to positive port so depending upon where the resistor is connected on the device it will be detected as a low speed or high speed because in the usb you have a two standards huh? low speed or, or high speed high speed usb is like 400 mbps also this guy will be uh, i mean 12 mbps also very slow speed yeah you can say that actually as a standard is improving but uh, usually what happens uh, higher standard is back compatible to the previous standard so uh, so that's why. when you build a host controller actually it has to be compatible to uh, everything so um, your device can can have a different but your host has to support uh, everything so when we say low speed device and full speed device that means there are two different devices actually and uh, you can relate that to your usb standard obviously so 1.0 or because as standard is kept moving your speed is increasing okay now you have usb 3.0 uh, that is much higher speed so so this is how your charger ic looks like and the core of this charger is a buck converter okay as i mentioned earlier like uh, um, everything is built around your dc dc converter all your ad advanced power management systems are built around dc dc converter so the core is dc dc converter which takes the 5 volt from your wall adapter and and since uh, it the role of this is to supply a constant current so this works as a constant current just like your led driver huh? so led driver what it does it supplies constant current to led so we need to sense the current for that and we looked into the um, and for camera flash the so it's quite similar to that you can say and camera flash was drawing like 1 amp and you need to sense the current so sensing can be done either by external but in battery case uh, is uh, accuracy is more important actually here when you are charging with the full current then uh, if uh, battery doesn't allow to charge above that 
and you want to maximize the uh, charging current then you have to make sure that it doesn't cross crosses even 1% higher so that's why accuracy is very more important um, accuracy is more important here uh, so in order to get a very high accuracy uh, most of the time you put external sense register because that is uh, most accurate uh, small uh, 50 milliohm roughly and you sense uh, so this is your v bat uh, capacitor and that's where your battery will be connected on uh, v bat then this is your thermistor terminal obviously which is uh, connects to the thermistor and uh, so this is your battery actually so it has a bat plus bat minus is this ground then other terminal is your which i mentioned the bth you remember and the third fourth one was your bat id so in this case bat id is uh, uh, not shown because this looks like a three terminal battery so this end is connected to battery and then from battery you have a series register and you are sensing so this will give you the current sense so the voltage across this resistor this resistor is fixed very accurate so whatever uh, voltage drop you get across this you, from there you can measure the current so that you can regulate so this will be fed back so the this voltage will be fed back to the controller and that will modulate the duty cycle of this to make sure the current remains constant after that everything is like a, st a standard voltage mode bug which uh, uh, we discussed in, in previous topics ok. So there are lot of other things in your uh, charging uh, we know that it has to maintain lot of phases it has go between like switch between your constant trickle charge then uh, your pre charge phase then uh, constant current constant voltage phases. So it requires lot of comparators actually that is why you see too many comparators here. So, for thermal shutdown you need because you need to detect the voltage across that uh, thermistor and then take the decision. So, you need again uh, compare it with some reference in order to enter to uh, from constant current to constant voltage phase you again need to compare the voltage when it is fully charged again you need to compare the voltage ok because everything is based on voltage levels huh, if you see here this guy. If you are between this to this voltage level then it will be your full uh, maximum current if you are above this then you are basically you have entered into a voltage uh, constant uh, voltage mode below this you will be in the pre-charge phase here you will be in the trickle charge phase. So lot of comparators are needed here uh, so it is uh, that is what it is actually one band gap you can generate multiple tap multiple voltages based on your requirement uh, and then after that everything is uh, done by the DC DC converter. Okay. Then you have a switch here also uh, which uh, so this switch uh, remains open when your charger is not connected this only uh, closes when your charger is connected okay. because uh, uh, you do not do you do not want to allow a reverse current or something from there. Huh? So and uh, there is a one more reason actually um, I will tell you uh, um, in, in some cases we allow a reverse current but that is a separate purpose which is the next I will talk about but this will only turn on uh, this switch when you plug in the charger so it will detect that uh, charger has been plugged in then it will close the switch and then start running this bug but if you are not charging then you do not need to run this bug huh? so, so there is something called reverse boosting actually so what happens let us say in one case I am charging other case let us say I am connecting so, so let us say uh, in this USB port you can connect so many things huh? charger is one thing uh, so and charger is sourcing the current but let us say you have connected headphone on this USB. So headphone is taking power from here huh? not all the cell phones have 1.5 mm jack there are USB headphones also lot of USB headphones are there you would have seen you have not seen USB headphone go and uh, google it or to go Amazon you can buy it <laughs> ok. So the reason was like earlier they were willing to get rid of the 1.5 mm jack and connect everything to USB ok. But the problem with that is like uh, when you are charging you cannot listen to music <laughs> so that is why decided but uh, um, in between there were lot of like USB supported headphones where which can be connected to this micro USB or 
so so let's say you connect any usb device to this i mean that's not the only headphone there are other devices uh, accessories for the cell phone which can be connected to usb other, other than charger okay so so let's say you connect a flash drive here okay just like in the computer you connect to the cell phone this flash drive where will get the power from they get the power from usb port itself huh? they don't have any battery as such this memories so so and this is a charging port your phone now if i connect a device here which needs to be powered then it has to be powered from the phone again and that power has to come from this guy so again at, as per the usb standard this voltage should be 5 volt and my battery maximum voltage is 4.5 volt or so so it needs to be boosted so now and if you remember when i explained the boost converter how, how i explained it you just interchange the input and output that's what you do that's what we call reverse boosting so when you are charging this acts as the input port where uh, you it is supplying 5 volt from your wall adapter and your inductor is supplying current to the battery when you are connecting a device here which needs to be powered you oh, close this switch again and now your battery voltage becomes input and this becomes output which is supplying to the device so you are boosting your battery voltage whatever level it could be it may be 3 volt 3.5 volt but you have to maintain 5 volt here on the other side so it will work like a boost converter in the reverse boost mode so the same converter can be used for buck or boost so the advantage is you are saving one converter here huh? because you cannot charge when you are connecting a device huh? it's only one port you can use only for one purpose you cannot use for multiple purpose at a time so when you are charging it will act as a boost when, uh, sorry buck and when you are connecting a device which needs to be powered you will uh, boost it uh, and basically put it in the boost mode that's what we call reverse boost and it can be used for uh, any other purpose internally also you can utilize it not just for the external device let's say internally your uh, flash requires uh, 4 volt or so your camera flash requires 4 volt then again it needs to be boosted huh? so uh, in that case you can just utilize this when you are clicking a picture or anything this but in that case if you are utilizing for internal purpose as a boost then when your charger is plugged in during the time you are utilizing for other purpose the charging will stop actually so but if you are for camera purpose and all those it's not a very very long duration so uh, you can use it. the main purpose here is like uh, i want to save one converter here and use this uh, single buck converter for multiple purposes that's it okay so so there will be a tiny controller inside which will basically decide uh, when to enter which phase everything det usb detecting ba battery plug in plug out detection so let's say you don't have a battery and you plug in your charger so it will not charge anything huh, as such so you have to detect the battery presence also whether battery is there or not so there is a battery insertion insertion detection battery removal detection charger insertion detection charger removal detection everything gen is mostly done by uh, this charger so a lot of functionalities are integrated around this buck converter in the charger yeah you design converter portion and around that you design all the controller no not dsp it's a logic actually it's not dsp this is a simple logic you are not doing here a lot of processing or filtering here huh? that is not required there is no as such a big huge algorithm running here that is a part of your bms battery management system which does coulomb counting and everything so in in that case uh, so there is a separate one more ic which we call bms or battery management ic so what that does that so here sensing is done being done in order to make sure that you are charging at a proper current which is required by the battery but there is one more sensing is required uh, or uh, for the bms battery management system which basically measures the capacity of the battery so that is a separate portion there you require a lot of processing actually so you need to do coulomb counting and everything take this data okay run uh, 
then you have to map that into a proper battery model and uh, determine the state of the charge. So, when you are uh, measuring the battery capacity or level of the charge battery, then lot of processing is required there. So, that is a part of BMS. So, you have to build a complete algorithm there, but most of the time that algorithm is part of software actually. You do not build those in the hardware because you already have a processor on your phone, why do you want to put lot of processing in, in, uh, in that device? So, you can save lot of hardware. So, most of the time the um, measurement portion is there and all the processing pushed into your uh, processor uh, side and in cell phone itself. And that is a more logical, uh, I mean you already have a high capacity, uh, so high processing unit here. Uh, then why do you want to use uh, a separate uh, hardware in order to do the same job? Until, until unless you require autonomous actually, but most of the time your cell phone is running, uh, your bat you do not want to measure battery capacity when cell phone is off. So, that uh, ends your charger. So, and that was the last topic uh, of this PMIC course. So, the main intention of this, uh, if, if you remem remember my like the other lectures uh, were mostly like a step by step more detailed explanation and uh, this uh, advanced lectures were like a very brief introduction and I already mentioned uh, in the starting of the lecture that uh, we will be briefly talking about this advanced because in order to cover in detail, uh, we need a complete one more course if you want to, even if you want to talk about the charger, uh, it we require few weeks actually, it cannot be covered in one or two lectures. Uh, or if you want to talk about display power supply, how to design step by step everything, uh, then again it will require. Uh, but the main purpose here was like how to design a regulator, uh, that was covered in detail, linear and switching both. Uh, even uh, uh, giving a time span, we cannot co cover the detailed design of all types of converters. So, that is why we covered only bug converter. Uh, not boost converter, uh, bug boost converter we briefly covered. So, the idea was here like uh, you know how the bug converter is done okay, and build the foundation uh, uh, of your DC DC converter and then uh, from there you can easily uh, basically promote your knowledge to uh, other types of converter. So, as long as your basic concept is, is clear. So, that was the main purpose of uh, this PMIC course. So, hopefully in future we will try to introduce uh, one advanced level course uh, which will talk about in details all these uh, advanced power management systems. Okay.